Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, just give us an official timeline for AGI. What are you excited about in 2025? What's to come? AGI? Yeah. Uh, excited for that. This may sound like a CEO trying to hype up his company, but he actually goes on to explain how there's a clear path to AGI and they know exactly how to get there. Let's get into it. So this is an amazing interview between Gary Tan, current president and CEO of Y Combinator, and Sam Altman, former president of Y Combinator, who of course left in 2019 to work on OpenAI full time. They talk a lot about the future of AI, and one of the first things Gary brings up is Sam Altman's recent blog post titled The Intelligence Age. There's a wild excerpt from this blog post that honestly blew my mind the first time I read it, and Sam Altman actually gives us more insight on it in the interview. Here is one narrow way to look at human history. After thousands of years of compounding scientific discovery and technological progress, we have figured out how to melt sand, add some impurities, arrange it with astonishing precision at extraordinarily tiny scale into computer chips, run energy through it, and end up with systems capable of creating increasingly capable artificial intelligence. This may turn out to be the most consequential fact about all of history so far. It is possible that we will have super intelligence in a few thousand days. It may take longer, but I'm confident we'll get there. In the essay, you actually say a really big thing, which is ASI, super intelligence, is actually thousands of days away. Maybe. I mean, that's our hope, yeah. I guess, whatever. Uh, but that's a very wild statement. Yeah. Um, Tell us about I, it. I mean, that's, that's big. That is really big. I can see a path where the work we are doing just keeps compounding and the rate of progress we've made over the last three years continues for the next three or six or nine or whatever. Um, you know, nine years would be like, 3,500 days or whatever, if we can keep this rate of improvement or even increase it, like that system will be quite capable of doing a lot of things. I think already uh, even a system like O1 is capable of doing like quite a lot of things from just like a raw cognitive IQ on a closed end, well-defined task in a certain area. I'm like, mm, O1 is like a very smart thing. And I think we're nowhere near the limit of progress. I mean, that was an architecture shift that sort of unlocked yeah. a lot and what I'm sort of hearing is that these things are going to compound. We could hit some like unexpected wall or we could be missing something, but it looks to us like there's a lot of compounding in front of us still to happen. So yeah, I mean, it looks like he's staying true to that insane prediction. And they also touch on how O1 was essentially an architecture shift. I don't know how many times I've talked about this graph, but it's important to understand that there's now a new scaling paradigm, test time compute, which allows the models to increase performance during inference. So not only are we seeing predictable improvements when allocating more compute to training these models, but we're also seeing predictable improvements when allocating more compute to inference, which essentially means giving these models more time to think makes them better. Sam Altman also mentions that they could potentially hit a wall, and this is something that we've recently been hearing a lot about. This article from The Information basically claims that GPT scaling has slowed down and that OpenAI is exploring other options. Now, infamous OpenAI leaker Jimmy Apples has actually stated that this article is fake news, and you know, typically I would never question the legendary Jimmy Apples, but could this be true? If it is, then GPT-5 or Orion or whatever they're calling it may not be as good as we think, but don't forget, we still have the new scaling paradigm with the O1 model series, and that is clearly nowhere near its limit. We also had Noam Brown, a senior AI researcher at OpenAI focusing on reasoning, take to Twitter to discuss what he thinks about this article. He states, in the TED AI talk I gave, which they selectively quoted in the article, I made the case that there won't be a slowdown in AI progress anytime soon. He also tweeted out this, I've heard people claim that Sam is just drumming up hype, but from what I've seen, everything he's saying matches the median view of OpenAI researchers on the ground. So this is important because this next clip I'm about to show you is of Sam Altman claiming that they know exactly how to get to AGI. And again, this is not just some CEO hyping up his company. I mean, it could be, but it seems like this is what people at OpenAI who are actually working on this stuff truly believe. This is the first time ever where I felt like we actually know what to do. Like, I think from here to building an AGI will still take a huge amount of work. There are some known unknowns, but I think we basically know what to go, what to go do. And it'll take a while, it'll be hard, but that's tremendously exciting. I also think on the product side, there's more to figure out, but roughly we know what to shoot at and what we want to optimize for. That's a really exciting time. And when you have that clarity, I think you can go pretty fast. Yeah. If you're willing to say, we're going to do these few things, we're going to try to do them very well. And our research path is fairly clear. Our infrastructure path is fairly clear. Our product path is getting clearer. You can orient around that super well.
So it looks like OpenAI has it all figured out, and it's only a matter of time before they officially achieve AGI. Now, there's one more clip from this interview I wanted to show you guys where Sam Altman is asked about OpenAI's levels of AGI. This is the official graphic reported by Bloomberg. As you can see, level one is chatbots, so ChatGPT. Level two is reasoners and human level problem solving, which would refer to OpenAI's new O1 model series. Level three is agents, systems that can take actions. And then level four is innovators, AI that can aid in invention. And level five is organizations, AI that can do the work of an entire company. So now if we look at kind of the history of ChatGPT models, we can see that the first GPT model ever, GPT-1, was released in 2018, shortly after the invention of the Transformer in around 2017 to 2018. Then about four years after that, ChatGPT was released, which can be considered the first ever level one system, a true AI chatbot. Now, only two years later, we have OpenAI's O1 model, which is considered a level two system. So it took them two years to jump from level one systems to level two systems, and as you're about to see in this clip, the jump from level two systems to level three systems, and even level three to level four Four systems is projected to be even faster. I mean, sounds like we went from level one to level two very recently, and that was really powerful. Um, and then we actually just had our O1 hackathon at YC. Yeah, that was so impressive. That was super fun. Um, and then weirdly, one of the people who won, I think they came in third, uh, was Camfer. And so CAD CAM startup, you know, did YC recently last year or two, and uh, they were able to during the hackathon build something that would iteratively improve an airfoil from something that wouldn't fly to literally something that had yeah, that was awesome. a competitive amount of lift. And I mean, that sort of sounds like level four, which is, uh, you know, the innovator stage. It's very funny you say that. I, I had been telling people for a while, I thought that the level two to level three jump was going to happen. But then the level three to level four jump was, level two to level three was going to happen quickly. And then the level three to level four jump was somehow going to be much harder and require some medium-sized or larger new ideas. And that demo and a few others have convinced me that you can get a huge amount of innovation just by using these current models in really creative ways. Well, yeah, I mean, it's uh, what's interesting is basically Camfer already built sort of the um, underlying software for CAD CAM and then you know, language is sort of the interface to the large language model that they, which then can use the software like tool use. And then if you combine that with the idea of code gen, that's kind of a scary, crazy idea, right? Like not only can the uh, you know, large language model code, but it can create tools for itself and then compose those tools similar to, you know, yep. chain of thoughts with O1. Yeah, I think things are going to go a lot faster than people are appreciating right now. Yeah. Well, it's an exciting time to be alive, honestly. So yeah, definitely an exciting time to be alive for sure. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. I don't typically cover interviews like this, but I'm always watching them and I thought this one was really interesting. So let me know if you want to see more videos like this where I'm covering the highlights of these interviews. And also let me know what you think about Sam Altman. Do you think he's just drumming up hype or do you think he's actually telling the truth? Anyways, that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.